As we get started, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Anna Mule. I'm the executive director of Slow Food USA. Slow Food is an international grassroots organization dedicated to good, clean, and fair food for all. And we cover a broad range of topics from meat to bees to school gardens to cooks. Um, and so we're excited to have um, a mini series on Slow Food Live here dedicated to slow meat. And slow meat is all about good, clean, and fair meat and looking at sourcing of meat, looking at the policy of meat. Um, we heard from Adrian Lipscomb last week about how to cure bacon. That was really fun and a recap is on our website. Um, today we have a really fantastic crew to talk about grass-fed beef. So you'll meet Chef Juan Barajas from Savory Cafe in California. Chef is also the chair of Slow Food YOLO and is passionate about good, clean, and fair food for all in the greater Sacramento area. Um, he's all set up, as you can see, with a delicious demo today and a big green egg. We're grateful to Big Green Egg for providing this egg for Chef. And you'll also meet Daryl Wood, who is a sixth generation rancher who founded Panorama Organic Grass Fed Meats. Daryl's family ranch has operated since 1865 and he has helped protect over 4 million acres of rangeland in the West. He has firsthand experience in how cattle keep the landscape happy, sequester carbon in the soil and remove greenhouse gases. So I'm excited to have both a rancher and a chef with us today to talk about why grass-fed beef matters and how as eaters and home cooks, we can cook it in the best and most delicious way. So before I jump in, I want to thank Nyman Ranch and Panorama Organic Grass-Fed Meats, both longtime partners of Slow Food and sponsors of this event series, and also big thanks to Big Green Egg for providing it to Chef. Okay, Chef, I will hand it over to you. You have a really delicious setup waiting for us, so I will take no more time and just pass the mic to you. Well, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wood, and everybody. Thank you for tuning in and uh, having us prepared. We're going to be really excited about participating in uh, cooking with uh, Nyman Ranch, the, the series of uh, this uh, Slow Meats event. So really uh, excited starting to participate. So today we're going to be preparing uh, flank steak, and we also have some jacatory uh, skewers that we're going to be preparing. So we have a little orange tree right behind us. We're always uh, work with a, an environment around us and what's uh, what's local uh, and that's that's a whole point of uh, doing this particular uh, event we're partnering up we're going to be grilling uh, today we're experiencing some power outages in the area however we're always going to be ready for what comes out to us and uh, we were able to uh, get on a little green egg and getting ready for the spring and uh, we're excited to be here today so without further ado we're going to start cooking our uh, getting our plank steak ready we're going to do very simple seasoning. So the whole approach to food in, in our particular area is to grab what is closest to us, but we also go and search for the best ingredients out there. And this is why we're going to be preparing panorama meat today. Okay, so that we have the, the flavor itself. We'll be doing a couple uh, talking points as far as cooking methods, uh, technique on how you can do it. But today it's all about learning. It's about cooking together. And I know during this pandemic has actually brought you know, um, throwing a couple of curveballs at us. So we want to make sure that we're able to utilize the time that we have to cook with family, to cook with, a, with what we have available. So we are ready to gather. We're going to be cooking uh, again as part of this family. And uh, we are thankful to be participating with a uh, nine minute ranch and panorama meets. And it's that family of uh, food that brings us all together. That's what we're all about. So what we are going to be doing today, uh, we have is we have some uh, grass-fed uh, plank steak. We're going to be doing a really light seasoning on this particular uh, plank steak today, and uh, we have a little bit. We do have a little cafe, so we're going to do a little espresso rub on it, salt, pepper, a little bit of paprika, which is going to be on our uh, on our seasoning. Okay, so we can start on this particular with this particular recipe. You can have. You know, go to your go to your cupboard, go to your spice um, uh, section in, in your house. If you have salt and pepper, then you're good. This particular meat does not necessarily need any big flavors. The only thing that you have to be careful with, and uh, before we start cooking, is Slow to let you know that any of the meat that we have grass fed will always cook, and you always have to cook grass fed a little bit under. So if, if anything, if we can start with that type of advice, 
we have to just let you know that this particular meat, there's very, it's a very lean uh, cut of uh, meat. So we always have to cook that just a little bit under. Okay. So in a minute, we'll be cooking with some of our jacketory style um, uh, skewers. We're going to be doing a light glaze on it. And those are going to be going into our barbecue as well. Okay. So what we can do is um, on our beef, we're going to cut some slices and we have our whole uh, steak here. So we're going to cook to order. So say for a portion for about two guests. So that's, that's what we have. We're going to start cutting that. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to trim some of that, some of our edges on uh, our meat. What we do is we do grind some of our meat as well for our hamburgers. And you'll be seeing how we can prepare some of that. So our, one of our goals as well is nothing goes to waste, and especially when it comes to this high quality type of meat. Okay. So we're going to be cutting a couple small slices. We're going to go say about two and a half inches and that will shrink. And we're going to just cut everything into small spaces. Um, Use your gloves. What we always try to do when we're cooking it in our kitchen, we're all worried about cross contamination. So we have one of our hands that is going to be touching a meat, and our other hand is always clean. So if we're going to be preparing any of our spices, that's how we do that. Okay. And I know we have some experience and some beginners. So this is we're going to give you some of those points. I hope you don't mind. If you have any questions, just please either do that, use that, uh, raise your hand, or start sending some questions, and then uh, Felix will be able to ask those questions to us. Okay. So what we're going to be doing here is we have three beautiful pieces of uh, grass-fed beef. We're going to have a really light seasoning on this one. If you can see our uh, seasoning here on our little prep tables, we have some uh, tricolored pepper, some coffee, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. What we're going to do is just a light prep on this particular beef. We're going to flip it again using our head, and then we're going to keep our clean head clean because we're going to be opening up our barbecue we always want to make sure that we are um, keeping our uh, our areas nice and clean we do have our little working station as we need to have at the restaurants we have some bleach and we have items that we have to do that it's always handy before we start cooking just to have your whole area prepared and, and i think that's uh one of the things uh we can always uh, prepare you for this we're only as good as the area that we prep ourselves for. And if we have everything ready prior to cooking, you always have you always have your recipes, and you always have your ingredients, then you're you're setting yourself up for uh, for success. So on our uh, big green egg, we're gonna be ready. We have 500 degrees. Um, this particular oven say go up to five, seven hundred, eight hundred degrees. So we're gonna be using the Siri method. And the way we have our charcoal set up is we have an indirect heating so we can uh, actually do and start searing our beef. So what we'll be doing is we'll have our beef ready, our, flat, our beautiful panorama, grass fed, and we're gonna go directly into our, uh, our grill. Make sure your grill uh, uh, grates are uh, clean. And what we can always do is we can utilize a little bit of olive oil if you wish as well. And uh, let me grab my oven. And then, so we'll have a little bit of olive oil so it won't stick, okay? So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna go directly into the grill, okay? We're gonna go into the searing method. And it's starting to smell beautiful already. So we're gonna grab this beautiful bee. We're gonna be preparing. We're gonna clear this one out of the way. So pretty much that next thing that we do is we just wait in the meantime what we want to do for our uh, flank steak, we want to prepare a, a chimichurri sauce. A chimichurri sauce is an Argentinian uh, style way of cooking. Back in the day, when people were still taking, people were taking care of the land, like Mr. Darrell taking care of the land. And uh, Anna, you made a great introduction with Mr. Darrell about not only utilizing the products that we use, but why do we use the products? Why do we search for Panorama beef? Why do we search for those clean ingredients and those clean brands and those uh, companies that are sustainable like Nyman Ranch? And for us, it's about the sustainability of the land, uh, sustainability of, of the land, of the climate, the soil, and everything that cooking with clean ingredients and offices. So that's exactly what we wanna do here today. And we wanna make sure that we use the, as little ingredients to make sure 
that we are able to feature the products and we're so all able to honor the products that we have, like that Mr. Daryl and many other companies out there like Diamond Ranch has been able to put together to be able to feature those clean products that we have since this is what this is all about. So we have our oven. We're gonna close that a little bit and we're gonna let it rest for maybe about two minutes or so. The reason is when we use our big green egg and we close it, that's when it really maintains that temperature and we wanna create that sear. So in the meantime, we have about five minutes. We can start preparing our chimichurri sauce and our chimichurri sauce is gonna go right on top. And then right after that, we're gonna go into preparing our uh, jacatory kebabs as well. So I don't know if we have any questions out there or Mr. Daryl, you'd like to give us a little bit of you know, it, uh, info and about kind of what your farm is all about and or your ranching operations all about. I, I would love to, to hear a lot more from you. And let me just say before that, that I'm, I'm humbled to be able to be cooking and doing a demo together and uh, can be in a collaboration with uh, Nyman Ranch and uh, Slow Food USA. And uh, we can't thank you uh, enough for that, but I would love to hear a little bit more about your ranching operation and uh, what you guys do and then what is the whole respect of the land or the sustainability aspect when it comes down to, your, to the beef that you guys are growing. Not to put you on the spot there, Mr. Darrell. <laughs> well, I'm ready. So yeah. Uh, Sure, uh, sure enjoy doing this with you, Chef Juan, and it's a pleasure to talk to everybody. As mentioned, um, we've been doing this ranching business since 1865. Uh, my, my son and my daughter and their families are all involved in our operation, and um, uh, we're very excited about this. Uh, the Panorama program has been something that uh, is a dream come true for me. We, we started it out of um, necessity back in the early 2000s uh, because the market of our marketing of our beef into the conventional route was um, not successful for us. In fact, I had dropped my son off at college down in Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. And he told me when he got out of the car, he says, I want to come back to the ranch, dad. And I said, well, we're good. That's the dad's dream. We always want your, your siblings or your kids to come back and work with you. But at the time, we were slowly going broke in the conventional cattle business, and we had to figure out how to do it differently and do it better. So we started marketing grass-fed beef um, a little at a time. Um, I was literally dragging an ice chest up and down the streets of San Francisco in the early days, knocking on stores and restaurants, trying to um, get them to try the product. And little by little, um, it came together. and. Uh, uh, you know, we started this business uh, all by ourselves. We had no no experts to give us a hand in it. And, uh, and in the year 2000, we went from natural grass fed to organic grass fed. And organic grass fed beef uh, means that the land that these animals are raised on is certified organic. It's never had um, fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, uh, um, it's the best thing in the world for the land to be able to grow cattle and crops this way. And so once we started doing that, the market for our product exploded. And uh, we went from, you know, two animals a month to um, 200 a month, you know, in a, in a rapid time. So we had to bring in other ranchers into our program. Uh, today we have 34 ranchers across the country and together, um, there's over a million acres of, of, of land that's with the Panorama program that's certified organic. And I think that's terrific because, as I mentioned earlier, raising um, a product organically is the best thing for the land. The land um, is a key to everything, <clears throat> as Chef Juan mentioned. Um, when you treat the land good, it treats you good back. And uh, property managed, the land sequests carbon. Um, it added the atmosphere. It also uh, removes greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere uh, to be able to make our environment more healthy. But to keep the land healthy, you have to graze it. It's like pruning an apple tree. If you don't prune the apple tree, you pretty quick you don't have any apples left. And uh, the same with rangelands and grasslands. So you got to graze them. You got to graze them correctly. And using uh, ruminant, ruminant animals is the best way to do that. So. Um, and in my opinion, when you raise 
uh, cattle on an organic grass fed basis, you're indeed helping the um, environment, um, which you know also sustains wildlife, clean air and clean water accordingly. So uh, the Panorama program has been very successful in helping ranchers do that. And um, it's, it's an, an important part of, um, of the, uh, the Panorama marketing system to acknowledge the fact that our beef is indeed friendly for the environment. Your turn, Chef. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you for, thank you for sharing that with us. And uh, it's, it's always been amazing for us to be able to uh, see the type of ingredients that we have in, in, in our area in the local products and ingredients that we have in our area. And we're, I, I consider uh, myself a blessed individual when it comes down to uh, utilizing the products that we have available to us. And for us, it has been a long-standing relationship with Panorama B, uh, being here in Woodland uh, and being our county seat and being able to utilize those, uh, the products. And it has uh, always impressed us when we're preparing the products and we're preparing our food and the flavor itself that uh, is developed out of the, what well, we, we are, have a lot of love for the food that we cook. And I think that's one of those ingredients that you can't necessarily add, but you need to have that love and that passion for cooking when it comes down. But you, again, you have to start with the right ingredients and, uh, and the right the right product. And that's why we choose Panorama. That's why we choose to go with that. But in the meantime, uh, I don't know if you can, uh, we'll show a little bit of what's going on in here. We're getting a really nice sear on our on our grass bed here. And so we have a nice little sear. And for our beef, as far as you know, this is a pretty good size uh, steak. One of the things that we want to do, again, is we do not want to overcook our beef. I've started to prepare our chimichurri, so we're going to start with some garlic. We're going to do cilantro, some uh, other spices. But this is what we want to do. So if want, once, you, once you're, you're at home and you want to check the doneness of your of your meat. So by creating a fist, uh, when you create a fist and, and you do a semi tight, this is where you touch and this is the, how you know how your steak is cooked. Depends on the press and I don't know if you can see that here, but it's when you press and you have a really soft, that's your medium rare. So this comes with practice. And again, what we're doing today is we're learning together. We're cooking together to, to test the, the products. So we're gonna test our beef and when we're at a certain doneness, that's exactly what we want because again, grass-fed beef, we can't overcook it. We don't wanna overcook it because the meat does not have a lot of fat. The muscle itself is a lean muscle and we wanna keep it as so. So we have a beautiful, nice char and a nice beautiful sear right on our um, on our beef. And that's exactly where, we, where we're, gonna, we're gonna do that. We wanna let that meat rest for a good four to five minutes to be able to absorb back some of that flavor. We're gonna do in the meantime is we're gonna start preparing our chimichurri and we're gonna be doing a chimichurri with a little parsley, uh, cilantro. Uh, if you don't have cilantro, you could always use parsley. You have some lemons, you also have some lime. So it just depends on ingredients that you have at home and the ingredients that you have. The whole purpose of this exercise is to be able to be creative and it's okay to change some of the recipes but be able to utilize everything that you have at home. So you just, it's a citrus, right? There's a, for a sweeter flavor, there's always some oranges and we can always use that sour orange as well for a chimichurri. I'll be able to be able to go uh, from there. So we're gonna just do a really rough chop. Again, this is cooking for family. This is cooking at home. We're gonna do our, our garlic and then we're gonna put combine everything together. We have a beautiful olive oil that we are uh, preparing here today from Olica. We're gonna just do a really rough chop I, I like to just leave it as is, so just have the flavor of the cilantro. And we're just gonna go just a little bit more. And we're gonna put all, everything together in just a small ramekin and combine some of those flavors just to give us all that. The citrus itself will not help us marinate a little bit of the garlic, will help us break down a little bit of the parsley and the olive oil itself is gonna give us all the um, necessary uh, viscosity that we need in here just to go with the olive oil. This is particular olive oil that's harvested right in the Cape Valley um, about um, uh, in December, uh, November, between November and December of last year, which is uh, when olives are harvested in uh, this particular area. So we're blessed enough to have a lot of the different ingredients where uh, near us that we're able to enjoy and uh, have together. So what we have in here is great. We're gonna combine our olive oil 
our cilantro, our garlic. We're gonna have to add a little bit of lemon, lemon to that. If you don't have a strainer and you, and you have seeds on it, make sure that you use your, your God-given uh, strainers. Just use your hands. Uh, use your hand for that. Make sure that that's not, not going. Don't drop it, but we're going to use a little bit here and then just work, just use that for a strainer. We're going to do after that. We're going to grab and combine everything together. We're going to use a little pepper flakes that we have. Just a little pepper flakes to give us a little bit of flavor. Depends on how spicy you like it. If you don't, add a little bit more garlic. If you can't have anything spicy, add a little more garlic and the garlic's going to be nice and nice and fragrant. We're also going to do, we're just going to use salt. Salt is one of those ingredients that brings food to life, and uh, it also helps us, but we have to be really careful. We try to not utilize a lot of that sodium as well to keep our ingredients nice and healthy. And when our philosophy, especially during this pandemic, one of the things that we've learned is viewing food, viewing food as medicine. And what we do is when you view food as medicine, you stop looking for the best ingredients that you can source. And that's, that has been our philosophy uh, since we started our cafe in uh, behind creating our recipes and creating different ingredients. That's one of the things that we've had. And uh, that's that's what you can see in here. Um, olive oil has to create especially good olive oil when it's uh, processed uh, the right way or milled the right way. It's extremely high in polyphenols, which uh, helps to uh, fight all the free radicals in our bodies. Uh, lemon has a lot of vitamin uh, vitamin C and it helps us, uh, again, uh, garlic. It helps us with our circulatory system. So when we put our recipes together, we're always very thoughtful about the ingredients that we have, especially when it comes down to uh, using and choosing a great protein in here, which is this particular state, it's looking awesome. So we're just gonna grab our uh, chimichurri here and we're just gonna mix it a little bit. Don't be shy with your olive oil, good olive oil. Use it sparingly and make sure that you're able to have a really, really good flavor and a really good mix because this is exactly what's going to make our, our dish and it's going to put our dishes together, okay? Hey, Chef, I wonder if you could um, give us a nice close up um, of that dish right on the table camera. Can you just hold it up so we can see the consistency? Just yes, hold absolutely. it up to the, yeah, beautiful. So this flavor and this this uh, here is going to be uh, give us amazing flavor, not only to our beef, but it's really going to brighten up the different flavors of the flavor that we want here. It's just really again, it's one of those ingredients, uh, one of those uh, four ingredients that we should have on our uh, on our pantries. And uh, if you don't, it's a simple, super easy to make. And uh, that's pretty much all we need. You can always add a little bit of pepper if you wish, but again, you don't you don't really have to. But that's it. That's pretty much. This is what we can do for our dish. And then when you're at home, what is it that you have in your pantry? You know, if you want to do some uh, baked potatoes. You want to do uh, a mash. This particular recipe stands up to anything. It's again, it's an Argentinian type style. We have some veggies that we're going to be cooking. We're going to be throwing uh, those on the big green egg as well. And I like, again, the versatility of being able to use this big uh, green egg. So we make sure that we have some um, ingredients for that. And uh, as we chop some of our some of our cauliflower and uh, some of our, before we put them in here, then we're going to be using a little bit of olive oil. And then move on to our jacketory recipe. So do we have any questions or any questions out there before we move on to our next recipe? Yes, lots doing... of great questions here. Thank you um, for the little pause. I think it would be helpful just to give a kind of big picture about the types of beef that are available, you know, with grass fed. We have choice, you have prime, all these different cuts. What does, what's the impact of marbling? Maybe both you and Daryl could address that. Like how do we pick the right cut for the type of dish that we're preparing? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I missed that a little bit. I'm sorry, Anna. And you said, how, how do we juice our beef? Yeah, the, the different types of beef, right? Between choice, there's prime, there's grass fed. How, how do you choose which type of beef to buy um, based on what you're preparing? Well, for for us, for us has always been, I mean, our, our principle has always been choosing the, the best ingredients we, we can find. And, and there's different uh, grades of beef. So you start with your non-roll, which is uh, beef that has not been raised. Uh, and then USDA, uh, 
select, choice, and then we go into prime. What we consider when it comes down to panorama, I mean, for us, this is a, a prime cut or a little bit above a uh, prime cut, which is for us, it's a specialty, uh, specialty cut uh, and uh, specialty beef. So for us, it's all about the tenderness of the product and the marbling matters a lot, especially in the type of dish, like on the type of dishes that you're cooking. So, there, and there's different methods. If we're gonna be barbecuing, we wanna make sure that we that we have a beef that has not necessarily, you either want, if you're doing a steak, we always choose a prime beef with a lot of with a lot of marbling because that's where our flavor is going to be. Again, Mr. Darrell was talking a little bit earlier about grazing and how everything starts with the soil. And uh, we keep on going back to that conversation about the soil, but it's about how how the, the flavor develops in on, on the particular product that we have. So for us, it has always been very important to go and choose the grapes and to be able to have a rancher like Mr. Darrow or a company like Panorama Beef or a company like Nyman Ranch be able to tell us exactly the product that we're growing and having a personal relationship with the individuals that we are doing business with. Because this is exactly what we do. When individuals come into the restaurant, the restaurant is an extension of our home. So, and it's, and it's an extension. It's pretty much everybody that walks through that threshold it's part of our family. So we always look for the best ingredients, for the best grades of beef that we can find, for the best products out there to be able to offer that to our guests, to our family when we're sitting on that table. Thank you, Chef. And and maybe Daryl, you can answer that a little bit and also answer this question from Robin, which is, are you seeing an increase in the number of ranchers converting to grass-fed lambs? Um, and maybe, Chef, you could mute your audio just for a minute while Daryl answers, and we'll let the train go by as well. Sure. Yeah. Sorry Over to that. you, Daryl. No. It's okay. Yeah. The the, um, the ranching interest in growing this product is is I believe growing uh, greatly, and um, and which it, it, it excites me because when we first started this business. It was hard to educate and explain to the ranchers why changing their production system to do something grass fed was not going to be harmful for them. And after we've had, you can say, the, the test of time doing this, more and more ranchers are coming to us and asking if they can be part of this program because they're seeing the health benefits of it. And they're also seeing how my ranch, for example, is producing equal to or more than a conventional ranch because of our management practices. So um, we're getting a lot of interest doing that. Excellent, it's always exciting to hear. Okay, Chef, back to you. It looks like you're getting that cauliflower on the egg. Um, and maybe um, be sure to unmute your, your camera. And maybe as you go in here, we can answer um, a little bit about the big green egg. Um, do you like it? How's it compared to other units? You're uh, just getting uh, started with this egg. Well, we're always excited when we play with fire and, 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 and smoke. And uh, with the big green egg, it's always exciting to be able to cope with uh, some of uh, a, a style that is uh, versatile. We can do some cooking, we can do some baking uh, on it. Absolutely love it. And uh, we're thankful that we were able to uh, get up for today's uh, demo. As you can see, the quality of this here, the consistency that you can uh, get in here, that's what really um, makes our food, if we can replicate that recipe uh, again and again, and that's what a uh, green egg does, it helps us maintain that temperature so we can end up, uh, replicate the recipes that we have. And uh, like Mr. Darrell said, it's uh, it's not about what we can do once, but can we replicate and will, and will we stand the test of time? That's exactly what we do. So our goal, our philosophy, again, has been to make sure that we do that we do are able to prove the test of time and that we're able to do that. And I've heard that Big Green Egg, I, there's a lot of people that have had it for about 40, 50 years. So we take care of it. So we absolutely love it. Highly recommend it. So as we... I want to just uh, say a little bit, we have a little bit of the uh, Romanesco cauliflower that we get from one of our local farms. It's uh, Patrick's Garden up in Camino. So we're just going to do a little rough chop on this one. Again, olive oil, 
and we're just going to grab it. We're going to throw it on, on our big green head with a little bit of olive oil as we cook. And we're going to use that as our side, uh, side dish before we start moving on to uh, cooking our graphicori uh, uh, kebab. And uh, Anna, if any, I, I don't know if we have any questions from the, from the audience uh, now or anything before, again, we start transitioning over to our next, uh, uh, to our next yeah. recipe. Yeah, well, speaking of um, smoke and fire, a question here is how um, do you cook grass-fed beef at a lower temperature than conventional beef? And maybe you can talk some about like how you handle grass-fed beef differently specifically. And related to that is a question about bison and do you cook grass-fed bison the same as grass-fed beef? Yes, well, we personally don't have a lot of experience cooking with uh, with bison, but as far as the temperatures, what we do is we adjust our temperature, our grill, our green egg was right about 500 degrees when, when we were getting ready to start doing our, our first sear. The reason that we want to do that is because you want to seal the, as many of the uses that we can when you put it on and when you use that searing uh, that searing method. So that's a really good technique for cooking, and that's something that that green egg offers for us. So cooking with a charcoal again, it's that renewable resource that we that we can. It's a heavy ceramic, um, and that's one of the things that we want to do. But bison is very very similar. We have done some recipes with bison. We do not offer that daily at our restaurant, but we do have panorama in the recipes and that's one of the again one of the ingredients that we choose is the consistency of it and uh, the availability uh, but there's a couple uh grass-fed challenges i know the panorama is uh doing uh, right now so we want to make sure that we are able to play with the product and be able to utilize the product on a daily basis because like mr daryl said this is not something that we cook on just uh once we want to make sure that we stand the test of time and be able to utilize the product and we want to make sure that we support uh, uh companies like diamond ranch and we support companies like panorama uh, meat grass-fed beef and we're able to create a better um a community for the individual ranchers producers farmers that we have in that area and we also want to make sure that we stand that test of time when, when we go um, and we look back and uh we're cooking the great products but i know that there's going to be one of the recipes and in the slow food meat, perhaps uh, we have some other chefs and I know that through some of the slow food uh, meats, there's some uh, information regarding cooking with bison. And uh, I don't recall if that next, uh, the next uh, series, I will have someone explaining more of, uh, of the uh, cooking with bison, but you can always go to our website. You can send us a, an email and we'll be more than happy to work one on one together on any of the recipes that you feel we want to develop and be able to cook with some recipes like so. Yeah, so does that, does that, does that answer our, our, our question? Yes, that's perfect. Uh, there's other questions, but if you need to go back to the demo, we can, we can come back to those. Sure. Yeah, so we, we got our beautiful cauliflower again getting getting cooked and I just keep on adding olive oil. I absolutely love olive oil and the flavor that it brings. So there's different varieties. This is, a, we're using a Greek, this is a Koreniki. Uh, this, it's a Greek varietal that grows very well in our area. And uh, believe it or not, I know that I don't, without going too far away from our cooking demo, uh, Madison, California, which is about 14, 15 minutes from Woodland, it's actually been designated as one of the best places to grow olives in the world. So just because of the temperature, because of the, uh, of the climate and the soil that we have in our area. But again, we're very blessed about the, having the variety and the diversity of food that grows right in the area. And I think it automatically places in the right location in order to be able to offer the products that we, that we want to have for, uh, for our guests, for our customers, and continue to, to experiment and play with the products that we have here in uh, Woodland and Bilbo County. So, and our next recipe, what we, are, what we have uh, here is, if we're ready to move on to the next, we're just going to continue. We're going to make some uh, skewers. So we're going to be cooking like if you remember the last uh, couple pieces that we did for our trim on our beef, we're going to cook some uh, jacketory style ribs. And then right at the end, right before, in the next uh, 10 minutes or so, 
we're going to be putting together uh, complete dishes as well that we can actually uh, be able to serve. But pretty much what we do is we started with, our again, our grass-fed beef. And that can be all the trimmings from either the steak or something that has a little bit more fat in order to be able to put this together. So for this particular recipe, we are going to need some egg. We're going to need a binder. And we do have some um, skewers. So we have regular skewers. Tip on the skewers when utilizing your skewers. We have some regular skewers that we've been soaking. So we have those soaking in water. And uh, we do have some of a uh, orange tree when we had to, when we were building our greenhouse, we had to cut some of our orange branches. So we're going to utilize those branches to make some of the skewers. And again, they've been um, uh, in water. So they will not, the reason that we do that is so they won't burn while we're cooking. Just kind of go with that. We're going to grab ourselves. Make sure that we have a little bit of a larger knife. If you're cooking with your kids, which is always fun to cook with your family, I know that a lot of families have been home cooking with families. It's a great exercise that we can continue after this pandemic is over. Hopefully, uh, when things go back to normal, they don't quite go back to normal, and we stay cooking with the family. We start picking up different habits in which we're cooking healthier, in which we're utilizing the products that we have in our areas, and we start experimenting with our food. So we highly encourage you to be looking for the labels that are going to be clean, that are going to be better for the environment and are going to support a lot of the families like Mr. Darrell's family, a, a, a family of ranchers like Diamond Ranch and Panorama Beef. These are a little tough, but we're going to make some uh, great kebabs here. So for the binder, what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of our, there you go. We got about three, and we're gonna do a couple of the other ones on some of the some of the smaller uh, skewers as well. So we're gonna need a couple of eggs here. We're gonna start using our binders. And like my grandpa always said, we always gotta try to a multitask. Keep an eye on our cauliflower, which is cooking beautiful here. Gonna have a little chance to check that side dish. Nice, nice, beautiful cauliflower that is cooking. We have both a Romanesco cauliflower and a regular cauliflower as well. Again, just a little bit of salt and pepper. We like to use our salt a little bit before our uh, ingredient is uh, done and uh, be able just to highlight the, the color, the, the flavor without making too much of the uh, moisture on the pot. But yeah, that's okay. And for our trachetori, Gonna do is we're, again we're gonna use a little bit of a binder so we have some farm fresh eggs we uh use uh, this particular eggs from islote farm it's a local farm um really funny story about some of the products that we use we, again we try to make the relationship with individuals that we know individuals from our area and it's about knowing your farmer your rancher and uh, they are actually located at the very place where we grew up when uh, we were very young. So uh, Dan and Annette Jones have a great uh, ranch in which they do some, uh, some of the eggs. And those are the collaboration, or those are the relationships that we like to make with the individuals. Uh, we see them at the farmer's markets, uh, they do deliveries of the restaurant. And again, we built those relationships uh, based on the, where, the area that we're from. So. Again, we're gonna keep one hand clean. We're gonna keep with those principles of just keeping everything clean. And we're gonna use that egg as a binder for our jacketory uh, ribs here. We're gonna use a little white pepper, a little bit of cumin to give us a little bit of that flavor, just a pinch. Um, and uh, we got a little bit of uh, different spices. It's like an urban Provence in an Italian style seasoning in here again use it's all about using sparingly in our ground beef one of the tips that we can give you for the ground beef you do not want to overwork it you do not want to pack it too much what we're just going to do is we're just going to bind it slowly if you can just see pretty much utilizing the tips of your fingers just to be able to uh, work with our beef but we want to make sure that everything is uh, properly binded so we can do uh, we can get that going if you are um, uh, allergic to eggs, what we can always uh, recommend on this particular beef. It's not, you don't necessarily need to do it. We want to do it for this particular recipe, uh, just because it, it almost goes hand on uh, hand, but you don't necessarily need to use that egg if you have any egg allergies. And yet, 
play with the recipes, um, work with the recipes that you have, try it different ways. If you have any particular allergy to any of the ingredients, substitute it for something else. And that's what this is all about. It's about cooking together and making sure that everything, every recipe that we make is memorable. We're trying to make um, memorable experiences uh, for ourselves and for our families. This is uh, exactly what we're going to do. So if we are ready to go here, we're going to start getting both hands dirty. And what we're going to do now is we grab one of our skewers. We're going to grab just a little bit of meat. And the trick with this particular beef is you're almost going to be creating a roll. You're going to want something that's going to stick together. So you see when it starts binding, what you want to do is just want to grab and with your thumb, just put that together, grab one of your little sticks and we're going to just wrap it right around. What I have seen, if you don't have a barbecue, if you don't have an area, and I understand some parts of the nation are super cold right now, it is a little cold and chilly. What we can do is they can always be baked in the oven. Okay, so we're gonna make those small little lollipops in here. They're gonna be amazing with anything you wanna do, okay? So what we do, it's about preparing. We're gonna grab a small dish. We're gonna grab a couple. And I can, if you can picture this done here in about five minutes, start looking at them. We want to make sure that we do a kind of nice and even cut them in here. So we're able to thoroughly cook this beef. And again, like anything, when it comes down to our grass bed, the less that we cook our beef, the better of our, of our, the flavor is going to be. And one of the things that you want to do is you do not want to cook this beef all the way done because the meat itself, it's a whole muscle. And we want to try to keep that as, as um, the least as possible. We've got about five more minutes. We're going to check our cauliflower at the same time. We're going to go in with our yakitori. The box. Right. Yep, this in. is something that came up in the questions too. If you could talk about like how you know when your meat is done. When when it comes down to when it comes down to our when it comes down to our steaks, uh, if you uh, if you remember, we were we're doing our uh, the method of uh, checking uh, when it comes down to a thicker steak. When it comes down to our ground beef, what we're gonna do with our ground beef, it's you always want to check when it's 165, and that's that's recommended for uh, for beef. On our grass fed, we like to cook that a little bit under, and that's exactly what we're doing here today with uh, with our kebabs. We're gonna cook the kebabs when it's completely completely cooked um, on the in here. We have that in here temperature at about 165. We're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. You are great, just because why not? And uh, and we have it available. And uh, at the same time, we're gonna use a little bit of salt, just to do a little bit of a coating right on the outside. Get a nice little fire going in there with our olive oil. We're gonna get that closed for a minute and then let those cook just for about five minutes. In the meantime, what we have is we have some sauce that we're gonna sprinkle right on top, right before our dishes are done. What we're gonna do in the meantime, is we're gonna start preparing our steak with our cauliflower. We start presenting our first dish, and uh, we'll we'll let those uh, skewers cook. We're gonna give them about four or five minutes per side, or so, and we're gonna check uh, your fire. Maybe a little bit different at home, so keep an eye on it. I read about two three minutes. Again, the beautiful thing about our green eggs is that lid. As long as the lid stays closed, your temperature will stay constant, and that's exactly where we want to keep it. We want to cook at an even temperature in order to be able to have the uh, recipes that we want. And uh, in that, with that said, we're going to go back. We're going to start grabbing our steak. We're going to do a nice little slice of steak here. We're going to grab our cauliflower really quick. We're going to do a really quick, like almost as a family, family style way of serving our food is we're just going to do a really nice presentation in here. I don't know if you can see some of the bottom in here. We have some of the beautiful char on the, and these are the best. So kids usually don't like the green food. Well, I'll teach them how to eat the green food. These are great products and good food that it's a, a really good way to feature when uh, with family. Again, we can season, taste a little, do taste. If you'd like your food to be a little spicier, we can always use a little bit of lip flakes that we're using for our chimichurri. Use a little of those type of flakes. And then when it comes down to um, our meat, we're gonna be uh, just using and cutting our meat here really quick. What we wanna do with our meat 
is we always want to try to bet against uh, the green or out of bias just to be able to make sure that we have a really good flavor in here or the, ten the tenderness. But this is an amazing uh, cut of beef here. And that's exactly where we where we want to where we want to be. And we're going to grab that. I don't know if you can see the color right here, but this is exactly where we want to be. When I have a little bit of that color on your grass fed beef, it's really nice and light. And I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to try it. Mm. It really never fails to impress me with that first bite and the flavor. It just carries through. It takes me back to Mr. Daryl's ranch every single time. If you're making us really hungry over here. Um, I wonder while you're plating, Daryl, I wonder what your favorite way to eat your own grass fed beef is. Do you have any favorite dishes you want to share with us? <clears throat> well, you know, you know, my favorite cut of it is, of course, a, a ribeye steak. Um, that's that's my ultimate favorite. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll do a, a skirt steak or a flank, flank steak similar to what Chef Juan is doing there occasionally. And, uh, uh, you know, the uh, the short ribs are another one of my favorites. Um, and uh, so I cook a lot of short ribs, either raising or barbecuing. Um, then, the, then the chuck roasts are another good one, especially for if you have a crowd of people, you can cook those on, on the barbecue. The, the green egg, I use that myself a lot. So, um, you know, really, there, I, there's really not a bad cut of grass-fed beef at all, you know, and uh, so I think they're all, all very good. Uh, ribs are one of our favorite ways to cook it. What we usually will usually do a slow braise on the on our chili, on on our ribs, and but it, it is by far one of the uh, best cuts of uh, beef that we have tried uh, when it comes down to to cooking. We often do that for some of the events that happen out of the local ranches, and uh, it, it, it never uh, felt so so impressed. Uh, we're just going to finish up this dish here. We're going to leave it open for a couple more questions. Uh, we always want to make sure that we keep an eye also on what's going on with our barbecue here. We have a very, very simple dish prepared with our, again, our flank steak, our chimichurri sauce, be able to use enough of it to bring some of those flavors. We like to play our family style. Um, one thing that I didn't mention, as far as our tables, our philosophy against when it comes to food is inviting individuals into your kitchen and uh, inviting um, the family in to partake in uh, this family meals. So our particular tables in our particular restaurant is um, all arranged to be able to serve family. We have tables of eight and we call them our tables of eight. So there's six siblings in our family and then my mom and my dad and that brings us uh, our table of eight. So it's really important for us to be able to serve that. And uh, for for us, it has always been something that we've always wanted to do uh, with uh, family and uh, with just being an extension of our family and uh, being able to invite folks over. So without, I know that we're running a little bit short on time, so we want to make sure that we leave time for the rest of our for the rest of the for the rest of our. Uh, Questions or you think that we may have. So, what we're going to do is we're going to check on our last summer jar category. We seem to be seared, they need to be done, and we're going to look at the loss of the color that we have. These are ready to eat when they come off the grill. Okay, so we're going to what we're going to do on this one is we're going to do that right here. And what we have done in the past is we use a little bit of seasoning right before you grab them and sear. You can accompany them with rice. You can accompany them with uh, bread. There's a really good way of cooking some non bread into your grill as well. Just a really light seasoning before they're done. And we're just gonna do that. Grab a little bit of our greens. If you can decorate it, we have some beautiful watermelon radishes that we get from some of uh, River Dog Farm and uh, at the farmer's markets. And then just do a really light little watermelon here. A little bit of rice to go with the product even some of the veggies that we have and be able to utilize some of the vegetables available 
and uh, that's pretty much what we wanted to feature that today and uh, utilizing the, the versatility of uh, Panorama beef and the ingredients that we have available uh, near us and uh, the passion that individuals have in our area to grow the products that we do. It is what is so important for us to be able to continue to um, stay true to ourselves and not necessarily think of food as something that is going to be a bad. We, we work so hard and there's individuals that have worked so hard throughout their lifetime to build and to be able to have the products that we have available to us today. We are thankful, we are grateful for individuals like Panorama uh, Grass Fed, for Nyman Ranch, and for uh, Slow Food as an organization for giving us an opportunity to participate, to be sitting on this table and uh, pretty much you know, making our dreams come through when it comes down to healthy eating, healthy cooking, and continuing the legacy of being able to cook great ingredients. And that's exactly what we wanted to do here today. So we invite you to do the same thing at home. Be able, be true to yourself, continue a legacy that we will continue to follow and be true to ourselves. So wherever we find, we find those smells, we find ourselves with the clean ingredients, we find companies like Nyman Ranch, we find companies that we can continue to support and we want to make sure that we're able to do that. So, but we want to make sure also that we leave it open for any questions that we may have as we close. But, uh, again, I wanted to say how grateful we are for uh, receiving an invitation and letting us cook. And uh, Mr. Daryl, Panorama, uh, Anna, it has been a pleasure to, for us to be able to cook uh, with you today and for uh, you to give us this platform for teaching individuals on how they can also be cooking healthy uh, meals at home. Thank you, Chef. I think that connection between really well-raised food and nutrition is really important. And I really appreciate how you highlighted that in your cooking. What you are plating right there looks really scrumptious and I wish we were all visiting your restaurant right now. Um, Daryl, I just wanna turn it over to you for any last comments or thoughts um, before we wrap up here. Well, <clears throat> uh, basically I, I wanna say how much I appreciate uh, appreciated the opportunity to talk about this to everybody because you know raising the quality of beef that we do is so important and not only to me but to my family and of course the land loves it I mean that's that's the bottom line there and uh, also I want to um, say that I really appreciate what Panorama has done to be able to put this together uh, Panorama grass-fed organic grass-fed beef is the nation's largest a distributor of this product across the country. They do an awesome job. And um, uh, for those of you that would like to try to uh, buy it, you can order it on um, uh, nymanranch.com on their website. They have a uh, um, home delivery internet uh, system there where you can pick it up. And um, also the website will show the different retail outlets where you can get it locally if, if it's available. So um, again, very happy to do this. and. Um, I want to thank everybody. Amazing. Thank you so much. I'm going to throw the link into the chat right now where you can order Panorama meat directly. And right now there's a promo code. If you use grass fed 15, you get 15% off your order. And right now they're in the middle of a social media challenge. So if you hashtag grass fed challenge to any social posts, you'll be part of that campaign. It's a really fun way to see what other folks are cooking and doing with their grass-fed um, beef. Let's see, grass-fed challenge. Thank you so much. This is a really fantastic session. Um, Chef, I have one personal question. Maybe you can just uh, answer this and then we'll wrap up. If For those of us without an egg, do you have recommendations for doing this recipe um, in, our, in our kitchens? <laughs> our, our kitchens, um... Our kitchens are always, again, uh, we understand that not, well, not everybody may have a, an egg. They're, we're being spoiled by green egg here. Say we, we like to thank them for being able to provide that for us, but for this particular cooking demo, but there's smaller grills that we can always use. Um, if you have a uh, skillet at home, uh, a cast iron skillet, a cast iron skillet is always a great way to do some of your meat searing, just like we did here, uh, using a little bit of uh, oil, before you do your searing. So all this can be done indoors. Just know that there'll be a little bit more of the smell 
uh, coming out of your kitchen and you might have some neighbors come over, which is always <laughs> a, great, a great thing in other times, right? Perhaps right now we just got to keep a little bit to ourselves. We're going to make sure that we're safe, that we get through this together and that we're here okay. to live another day to make sure that we're able to enjoy together and then hug each other again and be able to share those recipes uh, with ourselves. But there's always different vessels that we can, uh, that we can utilize. Again, uh, in our oven, it's a great way to do it. Again, we just gotta have that sear on the hot sear on our meat, on our meat before we start preparing anything like so. Perfect, thank you, Chef. And maybe you can send me the recipe and I'll send it to everyone so that you can um, emulate this wonderful dish in front of us. I just wanna <laughs> mention that we have, this is the second in our series, the slow meat series in the beginning of this year. We have two more sessions coming up. They're each um, on Wednesdays at the same time at 2 p.m. Eastern. Next week, we are featuring Lisa and Arlo Ironcloud on how to make your own Tonka bar. I'm really excited to feature this indigenous, these Native American, um, folks who run the Tonka bar. And then the last session is what's the beef, a slow meat panel with Matthew Rayford. And we'll be talking about meat policy. And this is a really important component of learning about our food system and learning how we can advocate for slow meat and for good, clean and fair food for all. Um, so thank you again to both Chef Juan Barajas and Daryl Wood. Thank you to Big Green Egg and especially to Nyman Ranch and Panorama Grested um, Meats for this session. I have really enjoyed it. I am very hungry right now. And um, <laughs> thank you everyone for your time and sticking with us here. Well, thank you. I'm glad we were able to make this happen. And then we'll hope to see you next time. Thank you for having us in your house and, and having uh, the invitation today. We're grateful and thankful.